Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to this very special session here in Perugia. Well, after that, I sort of feel like my guests don't really need an introduction, but let's go through the motions. Anyway, and welcome very much, Yael Deckelbaum and Mira Elabumi from the Women Wage Peace Movement. Welcome to Perugia. And we were just able there to see some amazing pictures of the marches, especially the most recent one in 2017 in the autumn. And um, I've been working in the Middle East as a journalist for a lot of years now. And I remember when I started, an older journalist uh, came and told me, you know, Barbara, if you want your analysis of the Middle East to be right, be pessimistic. Because if you're pessimistic, your analysis will always be right. And, you know, thinking like that is easy, I guess, and comfortable. But then you see the image that really struck me was the thousands and thousands of women marching through the desert. And you look at that and you kind of think, well, maybe, you know, we can be optimistic about any kind of future um, solution. So um, I welcome the, the guest. Uh, let me start by asking, um, I guess, both of you, um, just to tell us how you feel and how you see the Women Wage Peace Movement. If you had to explain it briefly, and we'll go into detail later, but Yael, how would you describe the movement? Home. It's home. Uh, and it's a new home. It's a new light that is growing right now. And it's shedding a whole new light on this darkness that is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And also the inner conflicts that we have, the divisions that we have within the Israeli society. It's a group of women left-wingers, right-wingers, secular, religious, settlers, Muslim, Arabic, Christian, Arabic women who are working together with Palestinian women in order to create a whole new language and build a new world safer for our children to, to grow into, for all children that are on this land and create a new language in order to do that. Well, as she said, it's uh, uh, also a movement to bring us all together. It's also a movement to open new doors and new places for us to speak our truth and to bring what's really happening and what can we really change to the light. Um, I know that people have been living in fear for long enough and bringing these women together also gives a support group, a support base and it also like, shows hope for those who don't believe in it, for those who have the urge to bring peace but are afraid or are sitting back thinking that there's nothing they could do. And we are here showing that here it's happening, come join us. You know, like and especially that it's led by women, um, women who know how to bring life and nourish for life. It's, I think it's time for a global, even not only in Israel-Palestine, but a global movement of and, women. And we certainly are seeing sort of a global uh, female movement, but focusing on this, it actually started in 2014, and it was sort of born out of you know the umpteenth conflict uh, that we saw when there was the war between Israel and Hamas, the, the War of Gaza of 2014. So only a few years ago, a grassroots movement, but then that march, the last one that they had in, I believe, October 2017, actually 30,000 plus women uh, showed up, and it was incredibly varied. And pretty much you know, focused on, on all elements uh, of society on either side uh, of the conflict. But what's been interesting watching you two backstage is that you're obviously, you're activists, but you know, you're singers, you're artists, and you're also friends. How did you both get involved and how did you, in a way, meet each other and, and become friends? <laughs> well, I, uh, I met Women Wage Peace through a friend. She invited me to march with them from the north of Israel to Jerusalem in the March of Hope in 2016. And it was the first march, basically, which gathered all this amount of many women. Um, I'm also a part of a band called Three Women, Three Mother Tongues. And we speak in three languages peace, about peace and uh, unity. 
So it fit the message and they brought us to open the march in a concert. I sang there and I loved their vibe and I wanted to continue. So I was singing with them every day during the walk, during the breaks, whatever, just bringing the vibes of this is real yeah, and we can do this. And one day uh, they told me that Yael Deckelbaum, who I've never heard of before, but we met in the march on the stage. Uh, they showed me a song that she wrote and I learned it. Um, and yeah, one day we were marching and I was way in the end of the row. We were many women. And by the time I arrived to the place where we're doing the concert, there were already many women and I couldn't know like who's Yael, you know? I'm supposed to meet her. We're supposed to talk about the song before we sing it. And uh, suddenly I hear, yeah, please welcome Yael Deckelbaum and Mira Labuni to the stage. And like I run around people going to the microphone and that's where we meet for the first time. And she gave me a rock in the shape of a heart that I still have. And yeah, we started singing without even saying hello. Like we're on the stage. It's how we met for me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was a really special moment. Um, I also didn't know Mira. And I met with Women Wage Peace a month and a half before the March of Hope, where a friend of mine sent me an email with saying, there's this movement, I know you're involved in many things, maybe you wanna get involved in this. And I saw the words, Women Wage Peace, on my computer screen and I, I knew that I have to do something. So for the first time I contacted an activist group and I met with them a few days later and I was sitting with the women, one of the women, Lily, Lilia, she took my hands, she looked into my eyes and she said, you have met your tribe. And then I felt something, you know, something about this movement, it's not very analytic, it's very, very, so there's a lot of heart in there. And they showed me a video of Lema Bowie, Nobel Peace Prize winner from Liberia, telling me her story where she stopped, together with a group of women, they put an end to a civil war that went on in Liberia for 13 years. And they said, listen, we've been showing the movie about this woman all over Israel to women, convincing them if, if they did this in Liberia, we could do it here. And she, she was talking about how when women get together, peace is possible. And I started to cry. And they told me there's going to be a march with a thousand Palestinian women are going to come and march with us to the lowest place of the earth, the Dead Sea. And I said, okay, I got to be there and I'm here to give my music for your cause. And I started you know, collecting musicians and somehow the song came to me, Prayer of the Mothers, and it kind of turned into the anthem of the march. And they told me about this girl Mira who's been walking with them and since then we've been singing together. And tell us a little bit more about the song, which I think we're going to hear quite soon, but Prayer of the Mothers that you say has become the anthem. I mean, and obviously, in a lot of the work that you do, you link very much motherhood along with womanhood in a sense that that would be the key for women to make change. But tell us specifically about the song. How did it come about? So, yeah, so Women Wage Peace, they were marching from the north to the south of Israel. Uh, it started, it was two weeks. It started with a Palestinian woman and an uh, Israeli woman holding hands and just walking down from the north to the south. And I felt these women's pain and yearning for change in a way that I haven't experienced before. I was, they told me their story as mothers who have to send their child to war that they were sitting at home frustrated, thinking, well, I, haven't, I didn't raise my son for this. I didn't raise my son so he could die or kill at war. I, this is not what, what I intended. And feeling this, um, there's no control over how 
what world, what kind of world my son will grow into. And they decided to get together and do something about it. Because we're not just in responsible to bringing life into the world, we have to also start taking responsibility into which kind of world are we bringing our children into. We can raise them, but then eventually we lose them to this system where it's driven by fear, it's driven by violence, and it's time for us to take responsibility and create a new language here. And we have to do it together. And then they really started, you know, reaching out to, this is what the most exciting thing is that they were reaching out to right-wingers. Women, women from settlements are joining this movement. It's above the political language. It's a language of the people. It's a new revolution. And it really touched my heart. And I, I went one day to the beach thinking about these women and I started singing to myself. From the north to the south, from the west to the east, hear the prayer of the mothers, bring them peace, bring them peace. And that's how the song came about. And Mira, what does the song sort of mean to you? And what was it like putting that message out in, in your community among the Palestinians living in Israel? I didn't hear your question. Uh, so the meaning of the song, you know, what does prayer of the mothers sort yes. of mean to you? And how perhaps difficult was it to push that message among the Palestinian <laughs> communities at living in Israel, Israeli-Palestinians? Um, honestly, I was able to connect very easily to this song because um, the way I got into music was because I wrote a song when I was 16 uh, about being human and about um, love is the religion, it is called. And it's about simplicity of being human and accepting one another. And this song became very popular and people wanted to hear it and they used to hum it all the time. And I became like sort of a <laughs> peace, you know, musician. And when I, wrote, when I read the lyrics of Yael's song, it was the same meaning. And it says in Arabic, at least it says, between earth and the sky, there are people, uh, there are people who want to live in peace and uh, don't be afraid to dream about it. It is possible and um, I have to remember them and translate. <laughs> uh, when will the yeah, Don't be afraid to dream about peace and safety. That's, that's the message basically. And that's what I believe in. I know that it's hard and that it's scary and that it's dangerous sometimes to dream and talk about peace because of this two-sided thing in our, in our area is, uh, yeah. And I was, it was easy to connect to the lyrics and to get up there and sing it from the, my heart, you know? I, I didn't just have words and a melody, I was meaning it. What is it that you think, though, that women could and would bring that is different? Because obviously, I mean, you know, any man that you ask in the Middle East or anywhere, they would also say, we also want peace. And the reality is, and I know from doing a lot of interviews about the Middle East, unfortunately, 99% of my interviewees are always men. So what do you think that women can really uh, bring, especially when unfortunately, like in most other parts of the world, most of the political positions are actually held by men in, in both societies. You know, before coming here, I was uh, invited to, um, to sing at the embassy of Sweden, I think, in Israel. And there were many ambassadors and presidents from all over the world and especially Europe and I was surprised to go in there and see so many women who have powerful positions. And there was even one um, federal uh, military, what's the called? The, uh, yeah, military officer uh, with a very big role who was also a woman. And she gave an interview about how women can really affect by just being their nourishing selves and their caring selves, you know, and um, listening to their true voices and how organizing and uh, 
bringing groups together can actually affect and not just be like one scream that's gone and you know you don't hear it again how it can just be there echoing all the time and yeah I was surprised to see so many leaders who are women and it actually brought me to tears at some point that we need more more of these more of who but do you care. think that they're actually different because a lot of people would say that once women get into position of power sometimes they make similar decisions to the men I tell so you what uh, I think that uh, women integrating into the current system have to behave a certain way because they have to fit into the system and this system was forged for many many years by a certain mentality that it's not feminine. It's not a feminine mentality. Uh, we, are all, we have all embraced this system into ourselves so deeply and have become so accustomed to certain things like power games, like uh, competition, um, violence, uh, forcibly trying to end things between disputes I'm not saying that men don't have the quality or the ability to, to wage peace. Uh, men have this side, in, this side in them as well. 15% of women wage peace are men. But women have not been uh, an active part in building the system that runs the world. We've been running our homes for thousands of years. And Women, a good friend of mine told me, women are in charge of bringing life into this world. It's physical quality that we have. We bring life into this world and we're in charge of life. And when this quality of ours becomes a part of a system and we build a new, a new system based on, on other values of compassion, and I'm talking about a system that's based on values of compassion, of caring for the weak, of caring for the Mother Earth, Mother Nature, where we are now, and cultivating a new relationship between ourselves. And I believe that this is a time where women are uniting globally in order to do this, and it's happening naturally, and it is a part of our evolution as a species. Thank you. Is it strange, because obviously you're both artists, singers, songwriters, is it strange to also be activists? Or was it a natural progression also because of where you live? Is it strange for you to be an activist, a musical activist? You know, I I think for me it just came naturally. <laughs> I uh, I wasn't involved in violence. I wasn't involved in anything of racism and hatred until I was 18. Actually, I didn't have this rough racist childhood of violence, but I did meet so many that I could relate to, and and <laughs> I think each one of us. <laughs> I think each one of us should strive for their own truth. It's not about being an activist or not being an activist anymore. It's just wanting to live your life in your way, respecting others and respecting your own wishes. And being an activist comes <laughs> with all of that. Okay. Well, I think... <laughs> Well, I think now may be a good time to listen to another one of your songs. We had a little teaser in the, in the video before, and now, speaking of motherhood, one of the songs that I think uh, is actually the anthem of the movement right now, Prayer of the Mothers. So we'll hear it played live now, and then, of course, afterwards, um, some more chat. Grazie. Thank you.
יושבת מי שם וכביסה מתנפנפת לצילי החומה to sing with us. Yes? From the north to the south, from the west to the east, hear the prayer of the mothers. Bring them peace. Bring them peace. From the north to the south, from the west to the east, hear the prayer of the mothers. Bring them peace. Bring them peace. Let's hear you. From the north to the south, the prayer of the mothers the of the mothers bring them peace bring them peace bring them peace let's hear you louder from the north to the south from the west to the east hear the prayer of the mothers Bring them peace, bring them peace. Lives. From the north to the south, from the west to the east, hear the prayer of the mothers. Bring them peace.
The Italian word is bravissime. Very, very good. So thank you for that. And uh, um, Yael and Mira will also play another song towards the end of the session. And there will also be an opportunity for a quick question and answer uh, if any of you want to ask them a question. Now, um, I don't have to tell you how thorny the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, is, You know how difficult, how intractable it's been decades. and. I know that your group, as a stance, chooses to be neutral, to effectively not to get involved in the sort of politics of it. But, but I do have to ask you, because obviously, you know, people in the region who suffer would ask you, you sing Bring Them Peace. What does peace look like to you between Israel, the West Bank, the Palestinians, and, and that region? Yeah. Well, First of all, it starts with no violence. It's not like uh, Women Wage Peace or even I know what exactly the solution will be or how the territories will be divided or these are things that also Women Wage Peace prefer to leave to the discussion table. But first of all, let's get to the discussion, this discussion table. Let's sit down. Let's sit down and involve also women in this table because first of all, we have to put life as top priority. Eventually, my dream of peace, no walls, no weapons, people living together as neighbors, finding a way to get along and regaining trust in each other. You know, this is the basic and also peace for me is it starts with me it starts with mira it starts with you it starts with each and every individual who decides to heal themselves or extends help to others to heal them themselves because this is a disease and some people have a very hard time lifting their head from their daily reality um, a lot of people are suffering and we have to look into this place and pour healing into it. I think this is the most important element is compassion. And also, again, I always look at myself like I am the world and my inner relationship and finding peace with me every day. It's not an easy task. Finding peace within, with my people, with my neighbors, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy task. But eventually I think that we have to stop blaming each other in order for something to start healing and regain the trust. Yeah. Um, I think before Israel was even created, I don't think I've seen, I've talked to people who were there before Israel was created. Jews and Arabs lived peacefully, very peacefully. Jews spoke Arabic and Arabs spoke Hebrew and everything was normal, you know? And I don't know what happened, but it's a long story until we got here 
And what I see peace in Israel, Palestine today is just, as she said, removing these walls. But in, in order to remove the walls, the people should first talk together and agree to remove these walls then that they would live together peacefully. And it's not an easy thing to do, like Rael mentioned. But I see it happening not by giving a country to these and a country to those. It's just learning to live together. It should happen everywhere, not just Palestine, Israel. But if it happens there, if we succeed to bring it there, I think it will bring an example to everyone around the world that it's possible. It's, um, I just wanted you to tell the story about what happened with, near the wall a few days ago that you were. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, something specific. Um, well, there's this thing that happened in Gaza just before coming here. I've been here for a week. It's uh, three days before the festival. I came to Perugia. And uh, the whole conflict started again uh, near the border of Gaza. And after they marched the first day, everyone thought it's going to stop the next day. But no, they decided to keep going until the Nakba at Smaut day, the day of independence of Israel and the day of like a sad day for those, a good day for those. And, and I'm also participating in an event after the festival that brings both people together on this day specifically and see how that can work out. But um, I felt that there's an urge by many people, many people to go and do something and show those people from Gaza that there are people on this side also who want this to stop. Like, we're not supporting this, you know? But, um, yeah, so anyway, I heard this urge from many people and I decided to make an event and I contacted many um, groups of people and many organizations, but none of them, like you wanted, they all want to stay neutral and not to support one side. So it didn't come out by any name of an organization. We did an event near the border of Gaza it was for three days before, my, before I had to come here and it stopped. But people came together and there was one guy from Gaza one day, two people from the West Bank, Bedouins from the West, from the South. And people just kept coming and coming and the number, number kept adding, you know, of people there. And everyone coming out felt like they actually did something, you know, like they're not just sitting at home complaining. And this one guy from Gaza went back home and he wrote on Facebook that this was the most beautiful day of his life. And after I saw that, I felt like I, I did something too, you know, like this is, this for me is showing, you know, like my purpose has been accomplished. I've shown that at least one guy from Gaza that we are here and we are together in this and that this wall is not going to separate us and that these bullets are not going to shout for us, you know, we are here. And after I came and I thought it stopped, one woman was inspired by all of this and she continued the events. And until today I'm receiving pictures of how many people are coming and how many ideas are being talked about of things we can do. And yeah, now I'm excited to go back and continue, you know. <laughs> I, think, I think that, uh, first of all, yes, but... You're welcome to join. <laughs> I don't know, have any of you heard about this? About what Mira did, about what's going on there? None of us here heard about it. And this is a, a very important point that I want to say is, I, maybe it's going to lead to something you wanted to ask me later, but we're talking about media coverage here. These are things that media has to cover, and media doesn't, doesn't cover it enough. You know, we, we need to, mainstream media has to spread a message, not only of the violence that's going on. It has to spread the message of also the, the people who are doing groundwork for, for peace. And this is a beautiful story. Unfortunately, it's, 
It doesn't bring writing, so I don't know what drives uh, the media, um, but I think part of building this new system that I was talking about is sh starting also to shed light on positivity. It's a very important role that you guys have to play. We have to shed light on positivity because it affects people's consciousness. People hear only bad stories, they, they feel bad. If they hear some, we have to spread some good news. There are good news underneath the surface, and this is really important. This is your job. We need to stop. <laughs> we need to stop listening to the news and start making them. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I guess as a defender of the media here, I would say that what is really important, and I think what most of us who care about the story try to do, is to always show the human angle, because it's so easy to do a report where you say, some people died here, other people died on that side, politicians met, end of story, without ever getting into the details, the human angle, the people that were involved, it always affects family. It's not always a, you know, just one single death, it affects a lot of people. So I think that's, that's certainly what journalists who care about describing the conflict uh, properly try to do. And I suppose, you know, speaking of journalism, if this was a political interview, which it isn't, and I don't think it's the right setting, I suppose the question that I would ask you and the question that some of your detractors ask you, because, you know, it's the Middle East and people like to have an opinion and to criticize, they would say, well, is peace a two-state solution or is it a one-state solution? Is peace the end of settlement expansion in the West Bank? Um, is, you know, where does Gaza fit into it? Uh, what is the nature of Israel as a Jewish state when you know, I think 20% of the population are Palestinians. So these are all the issues that I respect you don't get into. But isn't there a danger that if you don't tackle these incredibly, you know, painful, difficult issues, in a way what you're doing is that you're leaving the decision to the men to make. No, that's one of the, the most, uh, one of the demands of women wage peace is to force the leaders, I mean, to pressure, not force. Put pressure on the leaders to sit down and have women sit at the table with them. It won't happen without women sitting at the table and they're demanding to have at least an equal um, presence of women at the table. So it has to happen. You know, in Liberia, uh, the women uh, sat the leaders down. They, they pressured them to sit down and they sat in the, in the room and they didn't come to an agreement. They didn't come to a settlement. This was a civil war where children were carrying guns and women were being raped and they'd had enough. And they were sitting in the room and they didn't come to a, to a, to a settlement. And the women surrounded the building, holding hands and said, no, you're not coming out. You're not coming out until you reach an agreement. And this is what we need to do. We need to surround the men, also have some women there and say, enough is enough. We're not having this anymore. We're not playing along with this anymore. We're not playing along with this anymore. Um. You know, if we, if we, um, if we get uh, caught up in the little details that we've been caught up in so, so far, then we're just gonna stay caught up. Sure, but I guess this question specifically uh, for me, right? you know, most Palestinians would say, you want peace, and I mean, listen, we all know it took decades to get to where we are now in the conflict, but a lot of Palestinians would say, when Israel was created, there were meant to be two states, there aren't two states, peace to us is a Palestinian state in the West Bank. So my, my question to you is, do you feel pressure from within the Palestinian community to actually come out and take a stand or at least speak clearly about what it is? Is there a particular pressure on you? I mean, maybe there isn't, but what reaction have you had, good and, and bad, if both have, have arrived? Um, honestly, from a very young age, I had uh, pressure because um, I think my family saw an activist in me from a very young age, but I didn't see it that way. And they were arguing with me a lot, like, why would you want to be friends with, you know, one side or the other? And I do expect to be called a traitor 
and I do expect to be called many names and to be resisted somehow, but I also expect to be heard and understood, uh, maybe a bit, but I also expect to show an example of like, so what do you expect in the end, you know? Like, we're gonna keep fighting. You want what he want, what he want. Like, imagine there's one doll at a store and two kids are fighting over that one doll, one toy. And now you can't break it and give this one half and this one half. It won't work. The toy doesn't work like that. And you just gotta have to teach the children to share it. And this is how I see this. And if a person doesn't see it like that, then I guess he needs to heal himself. Like Yael said, it starts with us. We need to heal our fears and our own truth, you know? Like, we should stop being afraid of showing that we do want peace and that we can be weak also, you know? Our weakness doesn't make us... Um, uh, like, uh, to be fragile doesn't make us weak. That's what I mean to say. Um, and I, I have sat with many Palestinians who didn't agree to what I do. Um, but eventually we got to an agreement that, okay, like it's possible, let's try, you know. I've sat in conversations where one Palestinian, I had to translate from Arabic to English or from to Arabic to Hebrew between one Palestinian who didn't speak the language and one Israeli who didn't speak his language. Or, and I heard both of their stories, and I sort of had an argument with myself translating these two sides to each other. Um, but yeah, like, like I said before, it's just listen to your truth, you know? It's to get out of this system that we've been brainwashed with from a very young age, and to actually listen to ourselves and how we see this happening uh, in reality, you know, not just dreaming and well, I mean, certainly, you know, the images that we saw at the beginning of the session and the tens of thousands of women that turned out, and some men, I hear, that turned mm -hmm. out at the march, you know, that, that is a reality. And I suppose, perhaps, it's interesting to see that as your movement is expanding, actually, on the face of it, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is getting more tense. I mean, you could link it to Donald Trump getting in power. We're seeing now you know, violence on the Gaza border again, and um, there's gonna be the move of the American embassy to Jerusalem, which will invariably cause tensions. Um, how is, I guess, uh, uh, the situation getting more tense actually affecting your movement? Have you noticed that, I don't know, are you getting more people coming to you because they want a different yes, way? Yes, I think that, um, you know, just as uh, Trump getting elected, uh, got millions of women out on the streets in the United States. You know, Huda Abu Akub is one of the leaders, um, a Palestinian leader, um, an extraordinary woman speaker. She's the one who spoke in Arabic in the beginning of the video clip that you watched before home. And she says, um, there is only one reason why leaders like Donald Trump, Putin, uh, Netanyahu are becoming stronger now and it is for women to start waking up and take responsibility. Uh, the more we are being threatened and the more peace is being threatened and the more hopeless it looks and the more it seems like people with power are just playing with our lives and it's becoming more and more transparent, that's, that's the breaking point where people start taking responsibility into their own hands and realizing this is about survival. We have to increase the light. We have to spread the light. We have to spread healing. We have to spread love. Extreme, extreme, this is very extreme times. And the only extreme reaction is to fall in love, to bring love, to bring healing, and, and positivity, because it's a, it's, it is a battle between dark and light. This is how I see it. It's not a battle between Israel and Palestine. It's not a battle between Mexico and the United States. It's a battle between dark and light, and there is darkness and light in every people. 
And now it's time for the people who are understanding and connected to the light, start spreading it. And you can't spread light with hatred. You can't. You can't, you can't heal with vengeance. You can only do it with love. I know that we all certainly want to hear another song uh, from you, so that will be at the end of the session. But I'm wondering if there's anybody who'd like to ask a question. We've got the Perugia Festival helpers around with mics, I think. Um, would anyone like to ask a question to either Yael or Mira? Okay, well, you build up a bit of courage. I will ask a question, <laughs> which may or may not be the last one. In a way, we're focusing on women. And, you know, you mentioned Netanyahu and Putin, but, of course, not all men are, are, like, are like that. So there are some men that join your march. What do you do to try to be more inclusive? Because, of course, there is going to be no lasting peace unless the men also get involved. Men are welcome to be involved. <laughs> Please be involved. We can't do it without the men. Please. Like, we can't do it without the men. We can't do it without the men. We need and the, the men, men can do it without Is it changing though now that you guys are getting bigger and bigger? Do you find their attitudes to the group changing? Are you, you know, talking to more of your male friends who are interested in it and want to join? We have so many male partners in this journey. A uh, musical producer who is producing my music is a man and he so deeply believes in this movement and he's a beautiful man. I think that uh, not only in a peace and love and dark and light way, but also in a female-male sense, uh, women are starting to get their power, you know, and become more manly. And I think the men, like, don't feel threatened by it. But I think they should also start realizing their female side. And many, many men are doing that. And it's amazing to see it. And it's bal balancing many things. Uh, unconsciously like it's it's about balance like you said the world has not been balanced it's not about the feminine energy power overcoming the patriarchal yeah. ways it's about balancing the two energies in, in a way that is harm harmonic yeah <laughs> and also Arabs and Jews have something that can be balanced between them. The Jews can learn something from the Arabs and the opposite Arabs learn from the Jews. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> it's all about balance. I have to say, I think it's all about courage. And I think both of you have that aplenty, the courage to try something new and you know, to really fight for what you believe uh, in through music and, and, you know, and your marches. So thank you so much. It's been thank an you. amazing pleasure. Thank Actually, you. Have you here. <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to invite you. If you want to cover some important news, then I'm coming back to Italy on April 22nd. And, and I can tell you where it is because I wrote it down. So it's Difendiamo Madre Terra, um, which is on the 22nd of April in Trissino near Vicenza. So you will be visiting uh, Italy again. Yes, uh, uh, women uniting women and mothers to save Mother Earth from pollution. It's a very important cause, so. Women movements everywhere. Thank you so much, and we are lucky enough that we're gonna hear another song from you. So, Yael Dekelbaum, Mira Elabumi from Women Wage Peace. Thank you. So, you already used that we like that you sing with us, right? So the next song is talking about how my too many men are lost at war. And how it's time to change that. So what we need from you is to learn this sentence. So let's hear you sing this. What about the women? What about the women? Yeah, a little bit louder with more conviction in there, right? 
What about the women? Let's hear you. Ah. Too many, too many men, too many men. Lost in the armies of oblivion. Missing the tenderness of Mother Nature's hand. What about the women? Too many, too many, many, many men. Placed with a gun in each and every continent. Killing each other till we're facing monuments. What about the women? We're freedom fighters, seekers of the light. This man of all the moment has arrived to turn all hell into a paradise through love and recreation. For liberty and unity we strive to sanctify the very gift of life. Releasing every woman, man, and child to self-realization. So think alone and let yourself decide for who you are. Hold up your head and cry. Release your fear and let your power shine. Open up your eyes. Say what? Too many, too many men, too many men. Lost in the armies of oblivion. Missing the tenderness of Mother Nature's hand. What about the women? Woo! Too many, too many, many, many men Placed with a gun in each and every continent Killing each other till we're facing monuments What about the women? Nice. Let's rise above all nationalities Beyond religion and philosophies Wherever you are born you must be free Of fear and desperation Look for compassion in your heart of gold And you will find the universal soul As we are pieces of a greater whole Grave and restoration If we decide to change the rules we can Free every human all across the land The magic key is sitting in your hands It's time to understand Too, too many, too many men, too many men Lost in the armies of oblivion Missing the tenderness of Mother Nature's hand What about the women? Oh, oh. Too many, too many, many, many men Placed with a gun in each and every continent Killing each other till we're facing monuments What about the women? It's time to wake the women from the beauty sleep The heart of Mother Earth is weeping Biological clock is ticking The power games and politics are leading to apocalypse Stop living from your mind Whoa. Civilization needs a re-evaluation Recreation and to desperation Start cooperation through the nations We weren't only put on this earth to be a why we still have some responsibility The preservation of life Sing it for the free women of Africa. Sing it for the free women of India. Sing for women of Saudi Arabia. Stop the world from going any crazier. Only great abundance will materialize. From retrieving every woman's basic rights. When we stand together, we'll become the light. Women of the world unite. Women of the world unite. Women of the world unite. What about the women? Women of the world unite. What about the women? Women of the world unite. What about the women? Women of the world unite. What about the women? Women of the world unite. What about the women? Too many, too many men, too many men. Lost in the armies of oblivion. Missing the tenderness of Mother Nature's hand What about the women? What about them? Too many, too many, many, many men Placed with a gun in each and every continent Killing each other till we're facing monuments Women of the world
Yael Deckelbaum and Mira Elabumi from Women Wage Peace.